What's going on? This is AR Shaw rolling out TV. We're here with the one and only Master P. What's going on, brother? What's up? What's up? So you uh president owner of yeah. Portland's Gators. Yeah. Let's talk about that, man. How, yeah. how did that come about? Well, you know, a lot of celebrities was putting in bids for the New Orleans team, which is the New Orleans Gators, the shirt that I have on right now. And uh it's like a lot of people was thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? This is gonna be big. Let me let me go and put my bid in. And once I got approved by the lead, I was like, it's over now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm the official owner of the uh, New Orleans Gators. And uh, today we did a press conference with Tiny. Uh, she she's a female owner of the Atlanta Airs. And we're gonna have the first official ex expedition game in Las Vegas on September 23rd. So you'll get a chance to see this up close in person, like how this lead actually run, the competition, the talent. It's gonna be some of the biggest talent in the world that's playing in this. So the best you've seen in the WNBA and the NBA merge, and it's a summer, it's a summer uh, lead game. So it'll be a, a summer, you know, season. But uh, we're gonna do an exhibition game in Las Vegas on September 23rd, so you'll see the airs and the Gators go at it. How would, so how would uh, people try out? Can they, is it gonna be a draft? So, so each team will be able to have four WNBA players and four NBA players, and then just four unknown superstars. Okay. So you got if you unknown, you're gonna have to really be able to bring it. Okay, so you got like the guys in the street that can think of who they didn't I mean, think about it. There's a lot of guys out there that's real talented. Um, some guys, maybe they just didn't, they missed their moment. For sure. But they got a lot of guys that I know that really can ball, yeah. that's just underdogs. Yeah. And we're gonna get them a chance to shine in this lead if you really have it. If you can play with the pros, you'll be able to get on the roster and make your dream come true. I mean, you had a conversation about, um, I guess, artists who don't really understand what's happening until it's too late. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, a lot of us entertainers that are not educated to the business, we get robbed. And, and you know, with everything that I know, if I could help one of these young up and coming artists and say, man, let me show you how to maintain, you know, what you have in your money and be able to hold on to it. But a lot of them get caught up because they don't see what these lawyers, these financial advisors do. So they take their money off top. So it ain't like you might think, oh, I ain't gave them nothing, but they take their money off the top. So if you never looked at that or see the books, how you gonna know what you paying those guys? So, you know, my thing is with the next generation, I'm here for you, you know, if you keep it 100. And, and sometimes it's like you might have to go through something. I mean, we had to go through that. You might have to bump your head to really see that, man, these people taking advantage of me. Some of us don't wanna see. Some people don't want, I know a lot of athletes that lost millions of dollars, but they would rather go get into their, with their friends over 50 or $20,000. They'd be ready to hurt them when these guys and took millions from them because you can't see it because they got a suit on. So, you know, just because somebody got a suit on, that don't mean, you know, it, it, who, who would not want an expert like me that then sold hundreds of millions of records and say, look, look at my deal. Tell me how I can make some money. I mean, if you're serious about your business, you just want to be a rapper for the rest of your life. How long is your career? You know, I'm still around because I'm doing other things. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize the music career don't last that long, especially not a, a rapper. Was it, so was it true that once they gave you that deal, that all the labels kind of got into cahoots and said, we can't give nobody a deal like we gave them? I ain't never seen it happen again. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, being able to outthink the system. So, but it took me a lot of work, so don't think that that I just got that deal and the money just came in. No, I had to get out there. I put posters up everywhere, I invested in myself. I, I put billboards up. I couldn't afford billboards at the time, but I could afford bus benches. So you see me on every bus bench in the city. Uh, I started wrapping buses. Uh, so I did the things that I needed to build my fan base and I built a law of fan base that brought my record. So when they seen it, they looked at this no limit thing and when they seen it, they, they knew that that mean that it was a good project. And so, I mean, and the rest was history. And I, I, I give praise to the man up above because without him, you know, I wouldn't be here. So I, I had to turn my life around too. At the same time, I had to turn into a businessman. I couldn't just be a street guy. And a lot of guys want to be in business, but they don't know how to make those transformations. They still want to be out in the streets. I gave it all up. 
You know, I'm not perfect, and I realized, I just said, I asked God if you're going to give me a second chance, let me do something right with my life, and that's, that's what it's about. That's why I'm about helping the kids, because I know God spared my life. The ball, I got hurt playing basketball, and uh, education, and believing that man up above took me to, so I was able to read the contract. So people don't know, I, after I, before I got the deal, I turned down a million dollar deal with Jimmy Iovine. Oh, so, yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy Iovine offered me a million dollars, <laughs> And uh, I'm in the project, I had like $500 in my pocket. Okay. So I went to see him, and my brother was with me, my brother C. He was like, man, take the million dollars, we're gonna be rich and go take over the project. I said, nah, man, yeah. I ain't taking over no project. I'm, <laughs> when I get this million dollars, I'm gone, I'm out of this. I don't even wanna see no more projects. I need to be gone. So I sit in the office, I had to check, but I read the paperwork. So all this that's watching this, you need to read the paperwork. By me going to college, I look, I was like, to my mind, I'm thinking, this is a Michael Jordan deal, because Michael Jordan got a million dollars from Nike. Yeah. He would have been a billionaire. People don't know that, yeah. but they gave him maybe like 3% or 5% or something like that. So I was like, I can't do this deal because I won't own my name no more. None of this stuff. So I told him, I say, I said, Mr. Alvin, I'm going to get some lunch. I'll be back. So he was like, man, if, if you don't come back, you'll never get a deal in this town. I get back on the plane. I'm on Southwest. Start eating them peanuts. I start thinking about that million dollars. I said, man, look, they, the people, you want any more peanuts? Me and my brother, man, we about to fight. He, he was like, he was like, uh, man, why would you not take the million dollars knowing that we don't have no money? So he asked me, say, how much money you got in your pocket? I said, I got $500. He said, you got $500, you turn out a million dollars. I said, but before we start tripping on each other, if that white man offered me a million dollars, how much you think I'm worth? Gotta be worth 10, 15, 20, something. Yeah. You know, that's when he left me alone. It was a long ride back to New Orleans, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> LA, right? Yeah, it was a long ride back, but man, when I got back, you know, I had my Ice Cream Man project, and I'm like, I'm about to sell my CDs of the trunk of, trunk of my car, so I started hitting everybody. Yeah. I raised a little bread up, and uh, I went and did the deal with Prodi. I had the 200, because I was. So I, so I watched this lady in my neighborhood named Miss Irene. She, she was selling Avon and Tuckerwell. Okay. And so I say, I said, Miss, what you doing? What you selling? She say, you the police? I said, no. What? She say, well, because I'm legit. Yeah. I said, Tuckerwell. I said, I just wanted to see what you be selling. I see a lot of people go to a trunk of a car. So it made me start selling my CDs out the trunk of my car. Okay. So I just started driving everywhere, Atlanta, Chicago, Texas. It just popped my CDs out the trunk of my car and start selling them. So yeah. for the artists who coming down, and now they, because of you, they, they put the 360 field. Yeah. Where you got it, where they going to get your concert, your merchandise. They gonna Everything. Get all of that now. Everything. So for, for a new artist that, that's coming in, what would you say as far as how do they beat that? How do you beat I mean, everybody, right? A new artist that's coming out, by the time they sign you, that means you have a hot record. For sure. So why is you going to sign a deal when you know the only way they're going to sign because they know you got a hit? Yeah. So they're going to give you a little money, 75 G, 100. Maybe they get 200 G. Yeah. How much money do you think they're going to make off of you? Yeah. And so people don't realize, not just in America, music is hot, but in China, Japan, Europe, our music is hot. Yeah. So if it work here, I mean, it's probably 10 times bigger over there. Yeah. So you're missing out on all that money just selling for the 100 grand that they're going to offer you. Yeah. And that's why a lot of these music companies, they don't want us to see the contracts. Then they place you with a lawyer, and they place you with a friend to do all your business for you. You don't need to do that. We could do that. Like, I've always thought, uh, it don't matter if you're from the ghetto or you have enough education, then you get you a good team if you, do, if you can't do it. You just gotta stop being selfish. Everybody wanna be the king or the boss and all. Man, everybody that makes it is not self-made. They have a great team. They can buy it. That's why they call it a corporation. That's why they call it an LLC. You know, that's why you gotta know, understand business. So if you understand business, you know you, you might be the face you look at Bill Gates, Bill Gates is the face of this business, but look all the other people that make it go. Even if you look at uh, the guy that created the iPhones, he's not here no more. Steve, Steve Jobs, the, the business is still going because he just was the face. And somebody else could replace that anytime if you got a good business.